What is going on, good people of YouTube? It is me, Chavez. I am back with another player prop. Player prop talk live stream. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. As always, I hope this finds you doing well and in good spirits. Man, my camera is way off center. I guess that's better. Perfectionist. What's going on, everybody? Today's my Monday. Hope your Monday was good. Hope your Monday was better than mine. Yesterday sucked. What's going on, Darrell? Good morning to you, man. Yeah, yesterday was bad. Sunday was bad, too. We got a lot to catch up on. Sunday, Mondays, Taco Tuesday. What's going on, Ruben? Good morning. First uh, first day of the playing tournaments, uh, tournament games. So we should have some meaningful games. No more of this garbage bullshit end of the season, stupid rotation bullshit we've been seeing the last week or so. Just garbage ass NBA. So uh, hopefully today is uh, much better. Taco Tuesday. So hopefully we got some props to pair up with our own research and we can profit today. With that being said, <laughs> let's get started let's get this going if you're new to the stream hit that like button on your way in hit the like button on your way in anyway but if you're new to the stream definitely hit the like button leave me a comment in the chat let me know it's your first time here i'll be sure to get to your player prop question asap as a way to show my appreciation for your uh for your view and let's go Transitioning into the most morbid intro in uh, YouTube live history. <laughs> Probably not, but definitely not the most blissful start. We talk about death here on the stream every single day, every morning. We talk about people dying in their sleep. Over 10% of the U.S. population dies in their sleep every single day. You're listening to this. You're seeing this. You did not die in your sleep. So hashtag blessed. You got a whole day ahead of you. So. Do with it what you will, but uh, value it, no doubt. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people who don't get to see the next day. Moving on from death to turds. We got two days of turds to talk about. Um, I have a turd to talk about Sunday and Monday turd, but um, maybe we have the same the tur same turd in mind here so if you're new to the stream new to the channel why are we talking about turds it's talking about player props that didn't go well uh that sold that chalked whatever you uh, want to call it but just uh ruin your slip ruin your day we're talking about those player props today when we talk about turds that's what we're talking about we need all the air freshener we can get uh sunday's turd joe val Jonas valentunas well i guess i should uh maybe willie green is the turd that's that's the coach who decided to play him three minutes in the first three quarters and then put him in in the fourth quarter uh and played four minutes and uh got seven total minutes and the messed up part about that is that he would have definitely got the reboot or the dnp because he didn't play past the first quarter and then they put him in in the fourth quarter and ruined that and prize picks is definitely not going to give you a reboot on something like that so uh we went from missing out on the slip to possibly getting a refund to possibly not getting a refund ultimately resulting in a loss and then monday's turd i don't know the astros and braves the game that was uh, a real big letdown Jordan didn't record a single hit in four at bats came up with runners on in the bottom of the eighth and failed to get one of them home pops out the short terrible terrible showing for him uh the entire braves Offense scored two runs, which is better than the Astros scoring one run. However, two runs for that lineup is super low. So that that was super disappointing. Juan Soto. Juan Soto had a bad game. That guy continues to uh, peeve me. Uh, going back to his days in, in Washington. Then his, his stint in San Diego, where uh, he just never seems to come through. And now that he's in New York, a little bit more of the same. Those are my two turds. Charles Oliveira cost Ruben 400 bones. I saw that in the Discord. You had him in a few different slips. Yeah, that was uh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the smart guy that took the under on Aljamain Sterling's takedowns. <laughs> I'm that guy. He finished the fight with eight takedowns. So that was uh, that was fun. Calvin Cater, significant strikes, 52 and a half. He landed six because <laughs> he was too busy getting ragdolled. So, yeah. Uh, but Saturday was a much better day than Sunday and definitely Monday. Halliburton on Sunday needed 15 points for 1K. Oh, man. Man. Did I say what's up to you, JR? I saw your comment and then I just read the next one. Good morning. Now we're getting some major sell jobs in the in in the uh, chat today. That shit's done with, man. Meaningless NBA basketball. Now listen, if you've been watching the NBA playoffs the last two seasons, you've seen some wicked blowouts. Wicked. I have not used that word in so long. Uh, you've seen some wicked blowouts in the playoffs between really good teams. So blowouts are possible. Blowouts are are definitely in play in the playoffs. However, you are condensing the field to the best teams in the NBA, you know, um, the better teams in the NBA, I should say. So hopefully we're getting competitive basketball. Hopefully we're getting uh, better defense and uh, hopefully we're getting some some wins. No more stupid rotations. No more G leaguers. No more guys playing on two ways. None of that. Shit. Those teams are, are are done. They're in Cancun. All right, let's move on. Turs of the day: Oliveira, Soto, Jordan, Joval, Halliburton. Five turds. T five turds would definitely fill up the bowl. Moving on from death to turds to injury news. Look how little that injury news look how small the injury report is that's playoff basketball like literally the guys here that are out have been out kevin herter's out for the year uh malik monk's been out for a while gary payton's second been has been missing a few games so a lot of these guys nothing's new here like everybody's playing which is great you, you don't expect to see superstars on the injury report uh, i think the biggest name right now is Giannis, who is in well, his status is in the air up in the air is a status that's literally a quote so um the second second year in a row this guy has uh not been healthy in the playoffs so not anything for us to worry about because they don't play today and they don't play tomorrow so we don't care we're talking about playing games today mlb today whatever other sport you want to throw in but there's your injury report for today anthony davis is questionable uh and, and to be 100 honest and and fair none of these guys who are confirmed out matter i'm sorry nobody's playing these nobody's playing these guys uh maybe monk if monk was healthy you'd be looking at him but um for the most part these are role players these aren't guys that are like making or breaking your slips or your slates so we move on to um the next the next portion of the uh stream here what is going on big t what's up man good morning let's get it i need to bounce back in a big way today for sure 100 transparent i need to bounce back all right let's move on couple offers been talking about these on the stream uh last few streams Special offer still uh, still up in the Discord for Discord members only. I'm not going to read this entire slide. You can see it for yourself. You can read it. Uh, just a big drop off in annual package over on props.cash. That's what we use to research our player props. You'll get to see it used in real time today. If you've never seen props.cash before and only heard of it, you'll get to see it used in real time. So great walkthrough, great tutorial getting to see it done in real time but there's your uh there's your discord member price you don't even have to be in the premium discord just be in the discord sign up let me know this is not exclude this is not on twitter this is not on instagram it's not even on their website so unfortunately you cannot just go to props.cash and sign up for this offer just reach out to me dm me let me know and then i'll reach out to my contacts at props.cash and they'll set you up 
very easy very easy uh steps there second offer 10 day pass dollar a day over the first 10 days here um pretty uh pretty cheap here and if you're not cool with signing up for a month or a year totally understand that you want to test it out 10 day pass uh, a couple people signed up for 10 day pass they made their 10 dollars back uh if they followed our slips and if they followed the picks uh, they made that 10 dollars back pretty fast probably within the first day they made that back so this to me is a pretty good deal thought about i thought of it all by myself very proud of this idea <laughs> just dm me hit me up in the discord join freemium hit me up dm me let me know you want to join that's it i'll set you up you'll get access to all the premium content for the first uh for the next 10 days and then um uh, maybe the hard decision you have to make is figuring out if you want to move into a full month or go back to the freemium but nonetheless this offer stands hit me up come join the discord it's been fun Premium's only been up for about three weeks. Not that long, but uh, it's been fun. Moving on to today's plays, Tuesday. Why do I want to say November? April 16th, 2024. See, I changed the plays from NBA plays to today's plays. Because we talk about more than NBA here on the stream. But... Prize picks, underdog, jock market, sleeper, whatever, wherever you play. If there's a player prop up, we can research it on props.cash. And then from there, it's up to you. You want to roll with it or not roll with it. Speaking of props.cash, we just talked about the annual plan. But if you just, uh, you're not really ready to sign up for the annual plan, which is the best deal. Sign up for a month. Take 25% off your first month. There's my promo code. That's it. Sign up for the first month. Take advantage of this. Maybe sign up for the full year. But um, I got a couple different offers for props.cash. I've been using props.cash for a while, for over a year now, ever since I started doing player prop content. Even before I got on YouTube, I was using props.cash. So they continue to do right by me and I will continue to do right by them. All right. Moving on. Let's transition over to the uh, prize picks dashboard. Now, as I mentioned, we can uh, talk about other pick em sites, not just prize picks. But the reason I like pulling up the prize picks dashboard is for presentation purposes, it is the best looking dashboard. It is easy to read, it is easy to follow. You don't have to search for player, they're all right there. Search a name, they're all right there. Just to me, it's, it's, it's the easiest uh, format to navigate, especially when you're doing a stream. But if you wanna talk about underdog player prop, throw them in the chat. Wherever you play, throw it in the chat. We can look it up on props.cash. And hopefully by the end of the stream, you'll have a better, you just have better insight on these plays. Hope, hopefully it makes you uh, help, help, hopefully it helps you uh, stay profitable today. Just looking at a couple of plays for Joe Val today he doesn't have very many lines up and for good reason for good reason he's uh, been playing very few minutes as of late and um he just hasn't had a whole lot going on so just four props up for him but i was looking at his stuff earlier this morning what is going on grid iron beauties invest in tools to get an edge i agree i agree Knuckles, man, you're on the you're you're on the bounce back track. Posted that slip in the Discord. You nice little hit, nice little uh, 10x hit for you this morning. Davis, so inconsistent from game to game. Anthony Davis, I'm assuming Anthony Davis. Chris Paul over assist. Look at Ruben with a with a player prop and not a money line. All right, <laughs> all right. Shy, what's up? Michael Bush over 0.5 home runs. He tied the record yesterday for most consecutive home runs for the Cubs and could break it today. I feel like every year the Cubs have a, a top prospect in that lineup. You know, remember that they had Chris Bryant and Rizzo. 
Um, I just feel like, man, they just they, their farm system keeps pumping out top top guys. Now they may not sustain it over over time, but in the first few years, got some big names in there. Morel last year, Suzuki, now Bush. All right, uh, Gridiron says parlay playing underdog middling often. Yeah, middling is an awesome strategy if you can find the if you can find the right discrepancy. Like I feel. Like anything over two, it's a solid discrepancy. If it's 0.5 or one, it's a little too close for my for my comfort. But yeah, you start finding these two and a half, three discrepancy, you know, lines, especially in e in esports, man. Especially in esports, just play that, play the middle. Hopefully, it lands in the middle and you you double your profit. These guys have to go balls off the wall. <laughs> to the window to the wall <laughs> i agree tighter rotations in the playoffs more minutes hopefully equals uh higher higher uh production all right let's pull up chris paul check out his assist at five and a half we like the over on this one uh and honest i like the under on joe val uh i didn't mean to select more but i like the under on joe val today no more bullshit playing i agree i agree let's make a good six man today let's do it let's do it t we barely missed out was the uh santander the other the other week we had a me and t had a nice little second half slip we uh, put our heads together we we missed by a couple of plays but they were pretty close man all these all these slips all these misses are like by a point or two you know very rarely do you are you way off on the play it's that's how it always is 0. 0.5 to a point that'll cost you money all right this one is interest interesting to me uh the lebron james assist because so first of all this is i'm pulling this one out the discord this is from Mookie. She put this in her cheat sheet and um, on the premium cheat sheet as well. This is um, this is interesting to me because LeBron James has an assist line of nine, and then he has a demon assist line of nine and a half. And I feel like uh, unless you just want to play it very safe, you're gonna you're gonna play the demon because what, I guess what you're hoping for with the with the nine is that he gives you a push because he needs ten to get over. So. He needs 10 anyway why not just go with the line that gives you the most the most payout it is safer to go with the nine just because there's push potential but i mean he you're, you don't ever play for the push you don't ever put plays in your slip because you hope they push that's you don't really profit like that because the push doesn't give you they just they just cancel out so just wanted to show you the comparison here but Looking at his nine and a half assist. Can't get the 10. I mean, you can't go over nine, you know, without getting the 10. You think they're losing today, JR? You think they're trying to avoid Denver in the first round? I've heard uh, talk about that. <laughs> Trey Murphy. A.E. A.E.? A, A, is that the long A? A, what's up? I don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome in. Good morning. Trey Murphy, 16 and a half points, rebounds. I like Trey Murphy today. His uh his 11 and a half points on prize picks got got removed. It's still on sleeper. It's got 12 now. Um his threes were also in play at two and a half. So So if he makes three threes, which is highly, highly probable, it's possible, but it's also probable. Um, that's nine points. All right. In order for him to get over his 11 and a half this is what I had it on my cheat sheet at 11 and a half. He just needs two, um, two more or three more points. So. If you look at that and say, okay, great. He's going to get me at least 12 points today. His rebounds and points are 16 and a half. 
he needs five boards. And his rebound line today is set to what? They don't have it on prize picks. LeBron demon threes. We're going all demons for LeBron. What is it at two and a half? Well, we, we, we can't play. We would not be able to play this in a slip because you can't have two of the same props from two props from the same player, but we'll look at all this together. LeBron three points is better than his assist. You think? We'll look at them both for sure. Oh, what's going on? Yeah. Oh, a lot of people do. What's going on clips? I'm just going to call you clips if that's cool. Oh man. Yeah. A lot of people have different YouTube names. Franchise says, I want to take Steph points. This is the type of game for him to go off, but 29 and a half seems high. Uh, probably he's probably going to be at taco today. They haven't uh, released the voting yet, right? I, I didn't see it before I got on. First taco is going to be an NBA points prop, typically point prop. So let's quickly scroll through. We only have two games to, to scroll through. So let's see if there's anything that we feel might be a little too high that we could maybe hold off on. And so tacos drop. Hmm. Joe Val, <laughs> they dropped Joe Val's points to like three. <laughs> That's such a troll. Let's see. Um, maybe Zion points, but 24 and a half seems like in his range. We were getting his points at 26 and a half before the uh, playoff started. Zion, Fox, Curry for sure. I mean, he's almost at 30. Yeah, I would say Zion, Fox, or Curry because those point totals, we can make the argument that that at least Curry's is a little high. Uh, Fox in the playoffs last year, at least last year, I know he had those two big games where he went for 38, but the rest of the games, he didn't do shit. So I wouldn't be surprised if they drop his point prop. Well, they already have a, they already have a goblin prop for him. Whatever. We'll see what they do. Let's not, let's not try to uh, figure this out. We don't know what prospects is going to do. All right, we got six plays on the board. We can group Jonas, LeBron, Murphy in in one uh, one group, and then Curry and Paul. Perfect. Let's head over to Props.Cash. Like I mentioned before, if you've never seen Props.Cash before, if you've never seen it used in real time, we'll use it in real time today. I haven't even checked to see if the blogs are up. They're usually up around this time. All right. So we got player props for today in uh, the NBA and the NHL. So these are also great starts to your research. All right. Okay. Two games. This is going to be should be streamlined today with just two games i'm i want to look at joe val's uh pra at 12 and a half i mean i understand that's an incredible incredibly low line for him he's getting he's getting significant significant juice he's just getting juice to the under it's not a huge huge under but it is noticeable it's something you need to look at points bet likes the under at 160 129 on caesars 115 on bet mgm on both sides so i understand the game logs look like this 
what what really what really uh, always scares me about his shit is Larry Nance. Uh, Willie Green is quick to go to Larry Nance. I, I mean, Joe Val played one rotation last game. He played one rotation and didn't see the floor until the fourth quarter, which I don't get that. Did, Lan did Nance get into foul trouble or something? But his matchup today with Davis is is not great. Is he too slow now? Is that is that what's going on? Is that what went on in the last game? He's too slow. He can't keep up with Davis. Davis is too physical for him. I mean, I'm not sure what happened there. I could 100% understand if somebody wanted to go over on this one because this is the lowest line we've ever seen for him. I don't know if you can go back to his rookie year and see props, but maybe since then. This is such a low line, but... I think this game environment is, it doesn't feel like this is the game where he just goes off. So I'm, I'm willing to take a shot on his under. It may be a little sweaty, but if the guy only gets two rotations today, I mean, he's third, fourth in the pecking order behind Zion, Ingram, McCollum, maybe even Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy's way ahead of him in, in, in a scoring order. So I don't know. It would just be the thing where the Lakers do try to lose this game and Joe Val goes out there and gets 12 rebounds. Hopefully, hopefully the Lakers play well today. We don't need any more blowouts, no more conspiracy theories. But that one was standing out to me. Usually, I, usually I go right back to a player when they sell, but usually when they sell, they try. And they get their minutes and, you know, they just had a bad shooting night or something. Not like this where a player is like just not playing. The coach is just not giving him playing time. That's something I can't predict. Trey Murphy looking at his points and rebounds at 16 and a half. He has been on a rebounding mission. We all know that we were attacking those rebounds. He was a wagon for a while. If you can find his rebounds at four and a half, these look really like they're in a really good spot to hit. All all these books like the over on this one, nothing too crazy, but just enough for you to to feel good about it. He's gone over four and a half. He's gotten you five or more in the last eight out of ten games. Failed to do it against the Lakers, but let's look at his points and rebounds because his points are hovering between eleven and a half and twelve and a half. I don't see Trey Murphy going out there and getting you like no points or two points or something like that. I mean, he's going to score. Like worst case scenario, let's say he gets you 10 points. Okay. That's kind of a low line. Let's say he gets you 10 points. You know, Zion's having a great night or something like that. If he gets you 10 points, it means he has to get you seven rebounds. Do you think he can get you seven rebounds if he just gets you 10 points? If a lot of these games, he's gotten you eight, seven or more. So yeah, it's pro it's 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 um possible he can get you seven. We feel much better if he went out there and got us twelve. Because then he would just need to get us five rebounds, which is likely. So I, I think it's I think it's important to like play worst case scenario. And how do you feel about that worst case scenario? Because we all we're always going to feel good about best case scenario. We're going to feel great if Trey, if Trey Murphy goes out there and scores 15 points. We're going to feel great if he goes out there and gets you nine rebounds. But how do you feel if he's having a bad shooting night and he has to make up for it in rebounds? Like, how do you feel like that plays out? As long as he doesn't have a, a terrible shooting night and 0 for 4 from 3 or something like that, I feel like his points are in play and then his points and rebounds. That is a low enough line to where... If he was feeling good from three, you might see him make three or four. And that would just about do it for that points and rebounds. But those are those are subjective, you know, things there. Let's focus on what we can uh, look at and what is kind of already in stone. And those are the odds. So for his points, uh, 11 and a half was the line to take it at. Got bumped up. That's okay. His points and rebounds. 
This will my this this one might get bumped up to 17, 17 and a half. But while it's at 16, DraftKings is even odds on their uh books. Caesars likes the over, Bet MGM also likes it, but they have it at, at uh 15 and a half. Interesting that Bet MGM has it at 15 and a half, and they're giving you minus 130. Caesars has it at 16 and a half, and they're giving you minus 135. So it's in a good spot. LeBron James. Let's look at his three pointers first. Failed to hit a three in the last game. All right, let's look at the odds. Now his normal three line, 1.5. Crazy, crazy good odds here, right? Okay, so two and a half. He needs three. Over his last 10 games, he's gotten you three or more in 33% of those games. Three games. Over his last 15, a little better. What we can do also is look at the splits in the playoffs for him. So this is going back to last season, obviously. This is your sample size. It'd be funny if they counted the in-season tournament in this bullshit. But in the playoffs, we're seeing much more efficient shooting from LeBron James, at least this part of it. Four games, he got you three or more. Three games, he got you two. And then two games, he got you none. His assist sitting at nine and a half. So price. So wh who has it at nine and a half? First of all. So bet MGM has it at nine and a half. Um, uh, I, oh my God. The odds here are weird. 160 and 155 minus odds on both sides. Uh, points bet has it at minus 150 under. Yeah. You're never going to see positive odds on demon plays, but my whole, you know, logic behind that was you're only getting a 0.5 discrepancy between a demon prop and a, and a regular line, which is not that much. It's, it's one, it's one assist. So if you feel like he just gets you, I mean, listen, if you feel like he doesn't even get you nine, then don't play this at all. Play the under at nine. But if you feel like the upside is there, it's to me, it's worth the, worth the risk of putting a demon slip in your demon prop in your slip because he does need 10. Which, Le which LeBron do we get today? Do we get take over the game LeBron? Do we get facilitator LeBron? Can he do both? Can he get you 10 assists and knock down three threes? Over his last 10 games, he's gotten you 10 in two games, gotten you nine or more in, in five straight. And in those same games, these are playoff games. Yeah, it's it's possible. Okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, so now his last 10 regular season games, <clears throat> nine threes. <laughs> Okay, so his last 10, so big difference between playoffs and regular season games. He's not doing it very often in the regular season. Last 10 games, not that great of a hit rate. In terms of his assist, I'm trying to figure out if he can do both. Otherwise, you you got to decide which one you want to take. Because I'm not seeing a huge hit rate where he gets you 10 plus assists and three threes. In, in the last 10 games, but playoffs are a little bit different. So they're both a little risky, 
you know, but I feel with just two games on the slate today, if you feel like throwing one of these in a slip for the payout boost, you know, that makes sense to me. And I think it's a, I think it's a strong play because if anybody can grab you 10 assists, it's LeBron. If anybody can hit three threes, it's him. So I don't know if smart risk is, is a, is a term, but maybe we can call this a smart risk less risky risk i don't know all right that's a lot on lebron james uh lebron Jonas, murphy let's look at uh curry points and chris paul assist so curry's points 29 and a half alex lynn that's a name i have not seen in a long time all right so Curry's points sitting at 29 and a half. You want to take the under on this one or you want to take the over on this one, but you're skeptical because 29 seems high. Um, two out of his last 10 games, he's gone over this. Hooked it, came close, and the rest of these games, he's not even close. Head-to-head -head matchup with the Kings. Now, this is going to be inclusive of playoff games. Playoffs, he's going off, right? Like, all these are playoff games. Damn. Yeah. There is no seven-game series between this team, these two teams this season. So, we just got to figure out, can he get you 30 points in one game? No book really likes the over. I mean, the closest we're getting to an over is this one at minus 115 on Caesars. But you got BetMGM that likes the under. And then points bet and DraftKings also don't know what to do with this one. He is projected for 25 points, which honestly doesn't feel that like that wrong of a projection for him. I mean, you can create your own theory here. This is playoff basketball. Steph Curry, you know, doesn't want to get bounced in the play-in tournament or whatever. And you can look at his head-to-head -head matchup with the Kings, where he's performed really well, both in season, in regular season, and in playoffs. But pay attention to the odds and projections on this one too. This one could get bumped down, or this one could be our taco. This one probably will be a taco. If we're seeing a lot of data that supports the under, no one's going to touch it. Price Picks wants you to play that shit, so they're going to make it even more enticing for you to play it, which could be a promo. But as of now, I would probably just stay away from this one. He did have a good rebound prop at four and a half. I don't know if that's still available on Price Picks or where you can find it, but his rebound prop was looking real good at four and a half. Find it at four and a half and play the over on this one. This one looks strong. You're getting major support from all the books here. Projections also look good, giving him five. Chris Paul assist. At five and a half, we should see how many minutes has Chris Paul been playing over his last 10 games. Over his last 10 games, he's giving you... Um, 27 minutes but over his last five games this should be closer to 30 so 29 minutes there four out of his last five games he's gotten you six or more and then in terms of the uh last 10 games 60 percent hit rate projection looks strong at six you're getting positive uh game logs here both last 10 and head to head the odds on caesars does favor the over you're getting split on points bet and bet MGM. DraftKings likes the under slightly. So all these lines are pretty close. You, uh, There's not a real big difference in some of these books. So really, you know, how do you feel about the information we have in front of us? Do you like the game logs? Do you like the odds? Do you like the projections? If you do, then you like the over. It's hard for me to see Chris Paul not being involved in his offense if he's playing 30 minutes today where he makes the, his biggest impact is setting people up. So plenty of guys on his team to knock down shots. 
you want to correlate this with Curry and say, fuck that, Curry's going to go over points or see if Curry's your taco and then maybe put these two guys in the same slip, they correlate. They could correlate. All right. Six up, six down, under on Jovao, over Chris Paul. If you play a demon, you have to play the over. There is no under. So if you if, if you have a demon in your lineup, then it's you know it's over. If you don't like it, then don't play it. But there's no other option. You have to play the over. We do like the over on Trey Murphy, 16 and a half points and rebounds. And then as is, I think the under on Curry's points, unless we get a drop in these later today, I think this is um, I think this is in play. If Curry goes out there and scores 50 points, it's still like one of those plays where you're like, eh, I don't feel bad about taking the under on him. I mean, like, come on. It's Steph Curry. He, he, he does that sometimes, but I wouldn't be mad if that if that happened be more pissed off if Trey Murphy doesn't get his 17 points and rebounds. All right. Round one in the books. So we screenshot all these. So I throw them in a the discord. I throw um, maybe like 30% of these in the freemium and then all of them I post in the premium. If you're watching this in real time, then you already know what we're talking about. But for those who catch this later, I throw them in the Discord because um, it just serves as another reference for you for your research. What's going on, Divine? That's what I was thinking. Uh, that's what I was thinking, T. Yeah. How about Sabonis? Any particular play you were looking at Sabonis for? We can take a look at his lines. Throw one in the chat. T says knuckle. Uh, T says knuckles. T says Ed Wiggins should go off tonight. What if what if Andrew Wiggins' nickname was Knuckles? That'd be cool. Thompson threes. Okay. Okay. He's too slow. I mean, I figure like it's just a physical mismatch. I don't know. Are we getting Thompson threes at a, at a normal three or is it the demon threes? We got Goblin and Demon. I don't see a three. I don't see an OG three for him. I do see his three point attempt. We'll throw that one up there and then we'll look at his threes. And we'll kind of combine them when we go over to props.cash. We just looked at uh, Steph's points. Uh, we're gonna look at Clay right now. Let's throw some bonus assist up there. Maybe I can spell his name right. Are we not getting normal lines for these dudes? Like what's, oh, there we go, man. JR says Lakers game is too iffy now. He thinks Kings and Warriors is the game to target. If the Lakers win, then they play Denver in the first round. If the Lakers lose, who do they play? Is that what's going on? Clip says that's his prediction. Um, his other calculator gave gave him gridiron Zion turnovers. Where are you, Zion? Can't find him on Prize Picks. Is that an underdog play? Underdog does have a lot of these lines that that Price Picks fails to put on their board. You you may be able to find them on Underdog. 
like his turnovers are at a three. But underdog is starting to get a little sharper where they're starting to nerf their plays. They started doing it with the little the little spicy, the little peppers or whatever. And now um, now they're nerfing their plays to where they're giving you payout reductions, just like the demon and goblin. So underdog is starting to sharpen up their plays a little bit more. This one is a normal line at three. I do want to put them on the board so I don't forget. Let's just throw his blocks and steals up there just uh, as a bookmark. What's up, Vibes? Says that uh, check out Pajemski PRA. Is it under 15? Because if it's not, I don't want to have anything to do with it. No, nah, I'm just joking. I just threw that number out there. Oh, I misspelled his first name. There's no O in it. It's an I. Well, his PRA is not on prize picks. It must be that good of a play. Oh, shit. It's at 11 and a half on underdog. Okay. Now I know why you wanted to play that. Let's throw his threes up there for a bookmark. I'll have to make some notes when I throw these in the Discord just to let people know that we looked at this prop and not this prop because Price Picks doesn't have everything that Underdog has. So 11 and a half PRA for Pajemski. All right. Make sure to smash that like button. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah, hit that like button. If you're in the chat, if you're in, if you're on the stream, hit the like button. Fox under six and a half assists. I I saw that one today. I didn't look into it. I did look into his points, though. I did look into his points. Um, Got to be honest with you. I didn't like what I saw for the over. So maybe an under on his points. Maybe he's a taco. Lopez, what's up, man? All right. If Lakers lose home game versus winner of Kings and Warriors. Oh, got you. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, if, what if the Lakers and Pelicans are both trying to lose the fucking game and like the final score is two to zero? Like they just sit there in center court and shit. Like the shot clock just keeps going off. <laughs> And then they have to like make, they have to do like a, uh, like in soccer where they do the, the, like the penalty kick or whatever, it comes down to a free throw and they just keep bricking free throws and shit. Like nobody wants to win the game. <laughs> oh man. Adam Silver would be pissed. What a shitty product, man. That's funny. All right. We got Fox under assist. We'll go look at Pajemski's PRA. We'll look at Zion turnovers. We got Sabonis assists. We got Clay Thompson three-point attempts because his threes are not on prize picks, not the original line. But um, it probably would be helpful if we did know what his original line was so we can make a case for it. Underdog has him at three and a half. So underdog has these at three and a half and they are nerfing your, uh, your payout to 0.85. And price fix doesn't even have it. So they're making you take the nerf at three and a half. Listen, if you're going to take a payout, just play the two and a half on price picks. Does that make sense? Don't play the three and a half three pointers made for a lower line for a lower payout on a higher line. If you're going to take a discount anyway, just play the one that has better chance to hit, which is two and a half. That to me makes sense. That's a terrible line on underdog. They're charging you to play it and it's a higher line. Just play the two and a half. It makes better sense. Better sense? It makes more sense. All right, fuck it. Let's go. Prize picks. We're done with the board. Let's go over to props.cash. Uh, we're going to start in the Golden State Sacramento game. We got Sabonis assist. So we got over on Sabonis assist, under on De'Aaron Fox assist. Those correlate. 
ideally you don't want both of these guys dishing out assists because they just kind of cannibalize each other. So if you're doing that strategy, you want Sabonis to get you to nine plus and you want Fox to stick to scoring. If Fox is a taco, then maybe you do look to correlate with Sabonis assistance and uh, Fox Fox points. Sabonis to end the regular season, five for 10 over his last 10, three for five over his last five against the Lakers, excuse me, against the Warriors when he's not getting stomped in the chest. He's gone over in two out of his last uh, 14 matchups. Now, let's look at the playoffs for Sabonis, and they're awful. So last year's playoffs versus the Warriors, they did a great job of making sure he wasn't dropping triple doubles on them. If you believe that more of the same is to come, maybe you don't play as assist. If you know something that I don't know about the Warriors rotation last year to this season, and you feel like that's a big enough edge to play the over, let me know in the chat. At eight and a half, you're getting juice to the under on DraftKings, Caesars, BetMGM. So a lot of, a lot of, well, hold on. BetMGM likes the over at 155, uh, minus 120 juice to the under. This is weird. Projection today is 7.6. That, that's right in the line and what, what we're seeing out of him in the playoffs. Now, in these games where he's not dropping 10 plus assists, what's he doing? Three of those games, he got you 20 plus points. And in four of those games, he got you 10 plus boards. So a lot of these games, he's just really underperforming in the playoffs. If you feel like something's changed this season, the Warriors defense has, has gotten worse. That is something to take note of but based off the odds and the game logs against this specific team in the playoffs these don't look like a strong play let's look at fox's assists so these are playoff games so De'Aaron fox last last series last season last series in seven games, four out of seven, nine or more. His current odds right now, under on DraftKings, under on Caesars, under on points bet, and then under on BetMGM and under on points bet. So four books like the under pretty unanimously. There's no, there's no like, I mean, there's no like wavering on these. They've made their decision. They like the juice is on the under. I don't know. Home game in the playoff. I want to do that. Two out of four games. It doesn't change a whole lot. His points. This is what I saw earlier today. Now, these are home playoff games. One for four. And then just normal games in the playoffs two out of seven my mindset was oh shit we're gonna see the best version of the kings today like fox is gonna go out there and go off and then i looked at the game lock and i was like he hasn't done it yet yeah he did it twice that's not a lot two out of seven is a bad percentage 27 percent hit rate that's not good All right, so let's look at Clay Thompson's threes. Now, you have an option to play his demon threes at four and a half, okay? You have the option to play his goblin threes at two and a half for a payout decrease, or you have the option to play his three and a half threes made on underdog at a decrease. That is the normal line for him. So underdog pulled the prize picks and they took his normal line and they decrease the payout. So they're making you pay them to play it. So if you're already going to get a, if you're already going to get a reduced payout on this line and is a higher line, do you feel it's more likely that he makes three threes or four threes? If the money's the same. So 
Now, he's getting incredibly good odds to go over three and a half. So if you see this, DraftKings likes it. Caesars at minus 154, 150, 145. You see these big ass odds on the over. Maybe that gives you more confidence just to play the demon. Because you can't play as three and a half. So you see minus 150. You need five threes from him against the Kings in the playoffs. He's gotten you five three pointers or more in three out of seven games. So I guess the best option is take the goblin at two and a half. Then play the demon at four and a half. I just think that line on underdog is really bad. I mean, they're not giving you anything for that shit. Try to make your money somewhere else on that particular prop. When we're not talking to play about the playoffs, let's look at the last 10 games to end the regular season. Clay Thompson was five out of 10. 50% hit rate, 60% over his last five. Playoffs, non-playoffs. So playoffs, playoff clay is a little different than um, regular season clay, especially against the Kings. Now we do have his three-point attempts up there. All right. So versus Sacramento overall, he's averaging nine three-pointers. Now, over his last 10 games to end the regular season, he's averaging 10 right here. To end it last five, he's averaging 10.4. And then if we want to pull up the playoffs versus, I want to see what it is versus the Kings. Is it going to show me? All right, here we go. Sacramento, Sacramento, Sacramento. Here. Okay, all of them. So, look, I think nine three-point attempts is is well within well within range for Clay. If you want him to make five, you think he's going to go five for nine? Five for 12, five for 13, something like that. He's making a three every other attempt, right? So if he takes 10 threes, five, if he takes 12 threes, six, something like that. Not not exactly, but he's not making a three every every attempt. So it's like one out of every other attempt. If he's a 33% shooter from three today, in order for him to make four, he has to take 12 threes. That's over nine three-point attempts. So I think the three-point attempt is in a good spot. And if you like that one, then you can play his demon at four and a half or his goblin at two and a half. So we're talking about his threes. His points are definitely in play, right? Because if he, if he goes out there and shoots well and he makes four threes, that's 12 points. If he goes out there and makes five threes, that's 15 points. So I think his points are in play based off what we're looking at from his three point production and volume. DraftKings likes the under slightly. Caesars is undecided. Bet MGM likes the under and points bet likes the under. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to play his points. You can just look at two, you just look to his threes or his three point attempts. Projections like this one. Those are your playoff games. And then just last 10 games in the regular season. 50% hit rate and 60% hit rate. I personally like his threes. It's very rare that Clay Thompson is going to go over points and not go over threes. Like he's not mid-ranging it up. He's not driving. He's not hit knocking down 20 free throws a game. So where's his bread and butter? It's three. If you feel like he's going to have a good game from three, and take his three-point props. I think those are in play. 
Pajemski. We're gonna look at Pajemski 11 and a half PRA. This is on underdog. Five out of his last five games, 100% hit rate. Uh, this is almost a taco because we were getting his PRA at 15 and a half, 16 and a half when he was in in rotation when Wiggins was out. I understand they're fully healthy now, but he's he's a part of this. He's part of this rotation. So now he's seeing 26 minutes to end the regular season. Do you feel like this decreases to like 20, 21, 22? Do you feel he still sees 26 minutes? Numbers against the Kings have been, well, I was going to say incredible, but there's only one game. It is 100% hit rate, but it's not a big sample size so we're looking at his last five and ten games you're getting 95 percent hit rate when you combine these that's incredible his projection today is 16 16 and a half all you need is 12 how's he gonna get it <laughs> the under on his points at five okay so let's say he gets you five points let's say he gets you five rebounds there's 10 and then let's say he gets you to assist there's your 12 that to me feels like that to me feels like a very clear path to success you can kind of just you know uh, you know where that production is going to come from it's con very concentrated five five and two five six and two six four and three some shit like that that's what you're looking at it's not triple double alert but this is a really low i guarantee you that if he gets the over on this one today his next game is going to be 13 and a half 14 and a half this is a low line that was a good find who who put that in the chat that was really good and that's playable again that's playable on uh on underdog at least underdog. I don't know about any other pick em site. We just looked on prize picks and underdog, but it's definitely playable on underdog. Uh, we're going to look at Zion's turnovers. Now I have his blocks and steals pulled up on the board because we couldn't find his turnovers on prize picks, but there are, uh, there are three on underdog. So this one was getting incredibly high numbers to go over. So it was only a matter of time before it got bumped. Now it's at three on the underdog, meaning he needs four. If you feel like four is like, nah, don't play it then. Because the, the best, and based off your logic, if four is too high, then the best he can do is get you three. You don't win shit. So stay away from it or go find it at two and a half. But at three, you're still getting good game logs that show you. He'll give you four, give you five turnovers. Now, against the Lakers specifically, four out of five games, he's gone over this, including the last game. He got you four turnovers. We always talk about high usage players, players with the ball in their hands that try to make plays, that create their own shot. Those turnovers are going to happen in the flow of the game. Also, offensive fouls, that's a turnover. An errant pass, he tries to set a teammate up. They drop the ball out of bounds, some shit like that. That's a turnover for Zion. So... There are many ways you can turn the ball over. It doesn't always just have to be somebody stealing the ball from you. His projection for turnovers today is 3.64, which is over three, closer to four. This one looks solid too, but I encourage you to go find it at two and a half if it's out there, then go back to underdog and play it at three. But that's a pretty good one too. All right, five up, five down. Clay Thompson over three point attempts. And listen, if you think he has a good a good scoring day, then you could look to his points. I think his threes are in play. This is my favorite one because if anything you know from Clay, he's going to shoot. You can't always project when they're going to make the damn shot, but he's taking the damn shots. He does need 10, though. He needs 10 three-point attempts. So I like that one. Honestly, based on what I saw uh, for Sabonis, the under... Zion over, this is not blocks and steals. This is turnovers. I like the over on Zion's turnovers. Pajemski, 
we like the over on his PRA. We just can't pull it up on prize picks. And then the under on De'Aaron Fox. Blocks and steals for Zion. I mean, I have it up there. I might as well take a look at it, right? Blocks and steals, probably not as good as his turnovers. Although he is capable of this. And then in terms of his, uh, he is projected for 2.67 blocks and steals today. You're just not going to get the odds that you were getting on the turnover. So yeah, this one isn't, don't, don't force that one in. Real quick, uh, Pajemski's points. If he scored five points, that to me sounds like a three-pointer and a two. Unless there's a free throw getting snuck up in there. But uh, over 0.53 for Pajemski, I have that one pulled up on the board in place of his PRA. If you want to play the over on his three, that one is in a good spot to hit. Game logs look real good. His head-to-head, -head, he made it three last game. 80%, 70% hit rate. And then his odds, unanimous across the books. This is looking really good for the over here. So I know we were talking about his PRA, but if you want to go ahead and pull the trigger on his three-pointers made, I think that one's in a good spot too. So I'm going to go ahead and take out this Zion because I don't want people to get confused and then be mad because I said take the over on it. But I'll put it in the in the Discord that we looked at is turnovers. All right. Boom. Clear it out. Let's do one more round. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, Looney was playing. So Looney, that's right. Looney had himself, he had himself a nice, nice run in the playoffs. We were just, remember his rebounds just kept getting bumped up and bumped up. He was just 18 rebounds and shit. Let's see, Michael Taylor over, what's going on, Joseph? Minascus. Michael Taylor over 0.5 total bases. Corbin over three and a half strikeouts. Martini over 0.5. Christian and Carson F. Strand over hits. Gotcha. I saw that Corbin play earlier today. Then bumped up to four. Let's look at it at four. Martini over 0.5 total bases. Took it off the board. We can look at his, we can look at him and see what he's hitting. A total base needs to be at minimum a single. So if he's slapping singles around, maybe you look at his demon single. Now it is a riskier play because he has to only hit a single. Doubles, triples, none of that shit matters. Home runs don't matter. So he has to give you a single, but in place of his total base, we can look at his single line. Um, that's prize picks. Now, underdog has his total base at a point nine, so they're they're nerfing his they're nerfing his payout. Let's see here. Great on Joseph's uh, Demar Derozan, uh, thirty six and a half PA. We can look at it, but I'm not going to screenshot it because, well, actually I could, I guess I could screenshot it still. I mean, you can still put it in a slip today. And if you're, if it's a good play, it'll more likely be bumped up tomorrow. Right? So yeah, we can screenshot it too. It has been bumped down. So it was a good play.
gridiron uh 1.5 three pointers on underdog for pajemski you're taking the uh oh that's his line that's his normal line on underdog oh that's the one you're taking that's the uh so his points are at five on underdog his pra rebound three pointers made 0.5 higher 0.9 payout they took that one off the board i don't see it on underdog anymore it's just at 0.5 gridiron says uh all these fools are turning the ball over <laughs> lebron lyles barnes and zion giving you three turnovers or more tonight fox yeah his game logs look gross man what's going on romero Edwards. Edwards under steals. What is it? It's not on prize picks. They they brought it down to point five as a goblin, and you can't take an under on that one. So, I'm assuming his steals are at one point five normal line because. To go over this one, he needs one. Jay says, good morning. Are you going to cover baseball? I cover, yeah, whatever questions y'all have. So I go with your flow. So I got a couple of baseball picks put up on the board. Corbin and Martini right now. What's up, Vu? Uh, Davis. All right, here's the taco voting. Davis, McCollum, Ingram. I was way off on these. So no Curry, no Fox. No Zion. Hmm. Honestly, uh, the the one that I like the most out of all these is Austin Reeves because I have him on my cheat sheet. I played him at 22 and a half. To see it get bumped up to 23 makes me feel good. And now we're going to get a promo on it so I can play it again at 19 and a half. That's a, that that to me is the most appealing out of all these. And then I guess the second one. If we were going to get a clean, good game from both of these teams, and I would say Davis's points. But if there's logic to the Lakers not wanting to win tonight, then I don't feel good about taking Davis's points. I mean, it's possible that Davis can get you 21 points and the Lakers still lose. I'm not touching Brandon Ingram, man. Like, that guy. Yeah, those are my two favorite. Reeves and then Davis. I don't like the other ones. Ah. Oh. Davis is in the lead at 47%. God damn it. <laughs> oh, Joseph says you said my last name right. That's a miracle. Wainaskis. Wainaskis. People just people just quit on your last name, right? They're like, Joseph. It's not even that difficult of a name to pronounce. I mean. It's definitely not it's definitely not a common last name, at least not like like in my circle, I don't come across that last name, but I've seen way more difficult last names, man. <laughs> Sometimes people just don't want to like put in the effort to like sound shit out. But I'm glad I got your name right. <laughs> Thoughts on Ingram at four and a half assists. William Contreras. Jay, I saw your play. Let me, let me get this William Contreras in there. Hitch runs and RBI. You like the over on that one or under? I'm just going to throw Ingram in there real quick because we're already on NBA. And then we'll go 
William Contreras. Oh, uh, I wonder if this one's still on the board. Now, I was actually a little surprised. Uh, we'll see if this one's on the board. We'll see. Uh... For an underdog, I'm going Ingram, four and a half rebounds. Zion, two and a half blocks, steals under okay k bills what's up good morning Contreras, seven hitter fantasy score been greening for me mlb want to take a look at it today we're looking at his hits runs and rbis we can uh, definitely piece together a fantasy projection and also this one i was a little surprised at this one Now, I've been picking on Rodon a lot, especially last season. He just did look so bad. He was an easy target for most of his starts. This season, he, uh, I mean, very small sample size, but this season, he doesn't look terrible. <clears throat> but his hits allowed under was really standing out to me. So we'll, we'll put that one in there also. All right. Let's do it. How many NBA plays? Just one? Let's knock out this Brandon Ingram play real quick. And then we'll spend uh, the rest of the round breaking down the MLB plays. So. Now, Brandon Ingram's rebounds were really pulling in a lot of juice to the over. I think these got bumped up to five already. Projected for 5.26. His assist getting you minus 128 to the under on FanDuel. DraftKings is a little closer to the mid. Caesars likes the over. BetMGM likes the under. Points Bet likes the under as well. So you're getting a lot of unders on this one. Head to head matchup with the Lakers have been good. Last game, zero assists. Last game sucked, man. Over his last 10 games, he has a 70% hit rate. But over his last five games, we've seen this drop down a little bit. Now, remember, he missed some time, too. So there's a big gap in between these games. The scary thing about the Pelicans is when they're fully healthy, you don't really have. They're like the Bulls fully healthy when Zach Levine is healthy and the Rosen's there and Vooch. Um you're getting get equal contributions from each player and none of them are going off you know if the other two are having good games you're more than likely not going to see one of them have like a fantastic game and it's kind of like the pelicans where you just got so many mouths to feed and they're all productive and together they have a great output but like individual performances you're just kind of going to get like good good to okay good to very good performances when one of them is out, you know what happens. When Ingram goes out, McCollum's shit goes through the roof. So, with all of them being healthy, it's hard to pinpoint, con like focus where that where that content like concentrate on where that production is coming from. But I think his rebounds are in a better spot, just based off odds and projections. His points, oh shit. <laughs> uh, his points if they get bumped down to what is it again if his points get bumped down from 18 and a half to 15 and a half is that worth a look so first of all they're at 18 and a half on prize picks they're at 19 and a half elsewhere everywhere else even before he got hurt he wasn't really hitting this a whole lot. Now, when we bring this down to 15 and a half.
There we go. So when we bring this down to 15 and a half, uh, game logs don't look much better. Now, this is the last 10 games. Last five games are even worse. Now, head-to-head -head against the Lakers, he's gotten you 16 or more in, uh, in five out of those seven games. I don't like this one. I got to be honest with you. I, 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 I pray to God that it's not Brandon Ingram. I don't hate the Anthony Davis drop. I'm just biased for Reeves because I'm glad his line got bumped and now they're going to bring it down to 19 and a half. So, but I don't mind. Anthony Davis was the second, my second favorite on there. But yeah, this, this point, pro, I don't know, man. I like his rebounds though, uh, over his assists. That's just my personal opinion. We're getting a lot. We're getting a lot of support for the rebounds versus the assists. Now the game logs look really good for the assist versus the Lakers over his last ten. Uh, over his last five is more representative of him after injury. I mean, he was out from the 11th of March until Sunday, so he missed about a month. I feel like rebounds, you don't really have to try to get rebounds. I mean, you would assume that if you try hard, you get rebounds, but we've seen rebounds just bounce to people. Assist, you do have to try to you do have to try to set your teammates up, and then they do have to knock down a shot. There's a little bit more that goes into that. The way things are looking right now, I think his rebounds are in a better spot to go over, though. All right. Let's look at William Contreras, 1.5 hits, runs, and RBIs. Patrick Corbin just got bumped back down to three and a half. So I guess people were pulling the under on his four. So if you like it at three and a half, play it. In fact, now the matchup with the Dodgers is not ideal he is projected for four strikeouts okay let's zoom through this real quick because i don't they're gonna bump this shit right back up so projected for four DraftKings likes the over caesars likes the over points bet bet mgm pinnacle likes the over at minus 144 three and a half strikeouts very small sample size to look here he only has two starts this season he got you six against philly and then got you two against san francisco you have a decision to make here. We already know that people are playing the over on this one because it got bumped up. People love it at three and a half. Projections look good. Odds look good. He is projected to give up almost four runs, though. So it is possible for him to get four strike. It is possible for him to match strike out to run. But if you like it at three and a half, you like what you're seeing here. This is the time to play it because it's going to get bumped up. A lot of history between he and the Dodgers. Freeman, 47 played appearances. 43 for Rojas. 31 for Taylor. 28 for Kike. Quite a bit of strikeouts in there as well. All right. Let's look at this William Contreras play because we were looking at his hits, runs, and RBIs, and then we got a question in there for his fantasy score. Seven is his fantasy score. A lot of green to start the year off. 100% hit rate in his last 10 games. This is These are all games this season. These are all games this season. So 80% uh, hit rate in his last fifth in his first 15 games, 100% hit rate in those 10 games. He is projected for 3.25 hits, runs, and RBIs. Although we're not getting support from the books, so we're getting conflicting data here. We got projections liking it. We got the odds not liking it. We're getting really good game logs here to start the year off. His numbers against San Diego. Now, not all these games against San Diego are against Dylan Cease. 
but against San Diego, he performs well. Three plate appearances, so just one game against Dylan Cease. He went over in that game. He uh, struck out twice. So Dylan Cease fanned his ass two times in three at bats. To start the season off, numbers against Righty, Righty, Righty matchup for Contreras. He is raking. Last year had some good numbers, but obviously this average is better. Fewer plate appearances, so that by default drives the average up. More power from the left side or versus lefties. But this season, we're seeing a, uh, a nice split here, Righty, Righty. All right, so let's try to figure out if his fantasy score is in play. <clears throat> Based on projections here, he's projected for two hits. So we're going to get two singles for him. Let's just play it low baller, right? Two singles is six points. An RBI is two. That's eight. A run score is 10. Seems high, right? 10 fantasy points. He's done it in all these games pretty much. Now, if you want to be conservative about this, maybe he doesn't get an RBI. Maybe he does hit get on twice. Two, four, or three, six. And scores a run. There's eight. If you want to break this down based off of the odds. So the odds, we looked at the odds. You know, the odds don't like his hits, runs, and RBI. So if you want to play the over on his fantasy score, then you're looking at his projections. You're trying to figure out what he is projected to do. Because the odds are just not supporting him today. I'm sure that has a lot to do with his numbers against Cease. Now, minus 210 to the over on 0.5 hits. That to me is saying that he doesn't just get one hit. That to me is saying he gets basically two hits. What hits? Are they two singles? Is it a double and a single? So you have a few different ways to break this down. I always go low. I play conservative because if the projections grade out well and I'm playing it conservative conservatively, then I feel good about the upside. There's room there. It's real easy to say, oh, he gets a triple and a double and he scores 15 fantasy points. Like, okay. Make it difficult. Make it difficult for this to be over. Then from there, build up. Clear's path to success is a home run. But if this guy has to like nickel and dime his fantasy score today with two singles, that's six points. He definitely needs a run scored or an RBI. That gives you eight. If you get the over on fantasy score on singles and runs, or you're within one point of going over, you're in a pretty good spot. And from there, you can start building out. What if he gets a double? What if he gets a triple? Oh, shit. What if he drives in two RBIs? Play conservatively, build up from there. But based off just these, this number here, projecting projecting him for at least two hits, I mean, that's a huge odd. If you have any reservations on his matchup with Dylan Cease, completely understand that maybe you just stay away from this one. But if you're ready to attack a player who's just red hot right now, this is... This is a good player to go with because he is on fire. He is on fire. Corbin, Contreras, Rodon. Now, Rodon against the Toronto Blue Jays, under five and a half hits. Two starts, three starts, three starts this season. This is very promising. His outs are increasing game over game. He failed to get you four innings, then gets you five and a third, and then gets you six. Now, maybe he doesn't go up very much after this. Maybe he doesn't get you seven, eight innings. That's okay. Within that game, within those outs, I mean, he's suppressing the 
the earn run. So he's not letting teams get a hold of him. That was not the case last season. And his hits allowed have been for the most part good. One out of these three games, he let he let um he let those hits get 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 away from him. But two out of those three games, he kept them under six, which is what I want from him today. Playing the under on his hits allowed today versus the Blue Jays. You don't have to strike a lot of players out to stay un like in fact, like the power pitchers who attack batters, those are the pitchers that give up the, the runs. Those are the pitchers that give up the big hits and the big plays because they're throwing so fucking hard that the exit velocity on these pitches is ridiculous. And that's how balls end up in the Atlantic Ocean. So if a pitcher is painting corners and they're smart and they're getting batters that hit balls into the ground and double plays and pop ups, that's what you want. That'll sustain the innings and that'll keep the hits low. That's what was standing out to me about this one. I was very surprised because I'm thinking of Rodon from last season and start the year off. At least he's been uh, pretty good to start the year off. He's, a, he's projected to give up three earned runs on five hits. So I feel like there's a home run in there somewhere. As long as it's a solo shot, you don't want bases loaded or, uh, you know, two two runners on solo shots don't hurt it is just still one hit points bet likes the under uh or excuse me wrong one there we go bet mgm likes the under caesars likes the under pinnacle minus 153 to the under um i'm gonna roll the dice on rodon hopefully it's not a risk hopefully it's a it's an ev play based off what i'm seeing it is grading out very well Who was left? Oh, Nick Martini. All right. How many times do you feel like this guy gets the James Bond joke? Do you like your Martini shaking, not stir? How many times do you feel like he's had to slap somebody in the face because they just keep fucking with his last name? I'd get tired of that shit. All right. We need a total base or a hit. Same thing. Minus 145 to go over 0.5 total bases. Minus 137 to get a hit. You cannot get on base without a hit. Like the walks don't count. Being hit by a pitch doesn't count. None of you have to hit safely to get on base. So seeing the difference in the odds is always funny to me. I always say play the one that pays you the best. If you're playing this on sleeper or uh hot streak or wherever, whichever one gives you the best payout, that's the one you play because he has to do the same shit. There's no difference in the two. So total base today, minus 145. He's gone over in two out of five games. Uh, two out of four versus Seattle. Now to start the season off, crushing it. Nine, 10, 11 total bases. <laughs> there are a lot of games in there where he doesn't get it done. I get it. But when he does, he's going over by a lot. Projected today for 0.89 hits, that's one, or 0.89 total base, that's one. Same identical projections, that's, they're the same stat. Points bet likes the over, DraftKings likes the over, Caesars, BetMGM, and Pinnacle. We got five books that like the over on his total bases. Five books that like the over on his hit. Now, one game against Logan Gilbert. 0 for 3 in that game. In that game, can we pull up his... There we go. Struck out one time. That's okay. He's 0 for 3 against this dude, but he only struck out once, which means he put the ball in play two times. That's exactly what we want. If you're looking for a hit or a total base, you can't get on base if you strike out. You always have a chance to get on base if you put bat on ball. So he's putting bat on ball two out of three times. It just takes one. It just takes one hit. That's it. I will say, though, 
on the 0.5 hits, they're super enticing because they're very low lines, but they're low for a reason. Uh, typically, these guys bat in the bottom part of the lineup or they're not getting a, as many at bats or they're getting up when, you know, um, or they're some of them are more likely to get pulled from the game. So there's a reason they're so low. So not all of them are good plays. They're all very low, but not all of them are as good as what we're seeing for Martini here. But I think that one's solid. All right. Yeah, Patrick Corbin is still at three and a half. All right. It's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to make a case for William William Contreras' fantasy score, but not like the over on his hits, runs, and RBIs because I'm trying to figure out a scenario where he gets over seven fantasy points but doesn't go over hits, runs, and RBIs. The only thing I can think of is if he got um, if he got like a double and got walked twice. If he hit a triple, that gets it done alone. If he got walked like four times, but it's hard for me to figure out a way for him to get you eight fantasy points and not get over on this. So I like, I thought his fantasy score was, you know, in a good spot. So then you can look to play this one as well, either one or play them both in different slips and correlate. Uh, we were looking at Martini's hits. Now, because he needs a single at minimum to get on base, to, to qualify for a hit or total base, a single is in play. You could go with that one on under on, on prize picks. Brandon Ingram's assist, to be honest with you, I'd feel better about the over on his rebounds, but just based off the odds and just based off projections. Contreras, we like the over. Rodon, under on his hits allowed. And Corbin is back to three and a half. So that's back to being in play. I'm sure it'll get bumped up before I end this sentence. No, it's still the same. Oh, cool. All right. Boom. All right. What else we got? I'm just catching up on the chat. Hey, uh, Jay, I t <laughs> when I saw that name, Hung Ho Lee, I, t I read his Hung uh, hung Low. So I thought it was a joke at first. So you're going to make me say Hung Low. Hung Low. <laughs> I, I was just... Some guy on here tried to make me say some fucking name that I caught before I even said it so i had to like double check that one but hung who hung who lee hung hung low <laughs> oh man names are fun hitter fantasy score um what is it at seven dante what's up man good morning did i uh, check out Austin Reeves PRA uh, not on stream I did put it on my cheat sheet I did play it and that's why I'm hoping that it gets bumped back down to a taco or hoping that it is the taco so it gets bumped back down because then I get to play it again at a better line I'm scrolling up now oh you actually put that in as a question okay So we have D'Angelo, PRA. All right, let me go ahead and clear out this. Let's put, let's put Hung, Hung Who. I guess it'd be a better name if his first name was Who and his middle name was Hung. So it'd be like, who's Hung? Like, I'm Hung. And then that just, just goes on forever. You just keep going back and forth.
What's up, Dub Nation? Jonas talked about his uh, PRA at the very beginning of the stream. And believe it or not, I like the under on his PRA. We kind of talked about it. Um, he saw one rotation in the first half uh, last game. Um, even if he sees two rotations this game, he's just not, he's just not getting a run. Larry Nance, as long as Larry Nance is there, Willie Green just defers to Larry Nance. But if you like the over on Joe Val, let me know in the chat and we can, um, we can look at it from a different angle. Oh, I didn't see that one, uh, Joseph. So we talked about Brandon Ingram's rebounds at four and a half, and we like those. His demons at five and a half, so now he needs six. Yeah, uh, so Ingram's boards at four and a half. We uh, earlier is at four and a half. But if, if you're gonna play it at five, then you you're probably glancing at the demon at five and a half because they're so close. Kind of like figuring out which one's best. So we got. Um, let's throw one more. MLB play up there. And this will probably be the last round of player props. You are getting Ingram's demon at five rebounds. What? What time zone are you in? <laughs> play that. Sometimes there, sometimes you, I don't know if you've caught this on prize picks. They'll have the demon and the OG at the same line for like a minute. I don't know if there's just a delay in the transition or the update, the software they use, but every once in a while you'll see that shit. And it's not, it is not a joke. Like if you can, if you can get that shit in now, they might go back and like DNP it and you have to call support, but, uh, that happens every once in a while. So if you can find those. Those are always fun to take advantage of. What are we looking at? His pitching outs under Lance Lynn. Oh, man. No, my screen's cracked. I thought there was. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Who are we missing? What is Russell's PRA on, on prize picks? Did you like it at 21 and a half on underdog? Wait a minute. That's not right. Wait. D'Angelo Russell is at 21 and a half PRA on underdog. I'm seeing 25. It's the same on price picks and underdog. Damn, if you got his 20, if you got his PRA at 21 and a half. All right, let's look at these. And then we'll call it a day. We'll call it a stream at least. Last round of player props. Appreciate y'all stopping by, checking this stream out. First time on the stream, first time in the chat. Let me know in the chat. Means a ton. I'll be back tomorrow, 9 a.m. with another live stream with another play-in tournament or play-in. Play oh my God. With another play-in, play-in game. Yeah, play-in tournament, right? That's what it is. I said it right. 
another play-in game tomorrow. All right. Um, who are we looking at? All right, we're going to look at Huli's fantasy score, try to figure out try to figure out what his score could be. I've never seen projections like this before. Two hits, two singles, two hits runs and RBIs. And that gives you six. Those are his projections, but his odds are telling you that he's not going to get you one hit. Basically, minus 234 to an under is really bad. Now, his hits, runs, and RBIs are popping. So that doesn't make sense to me. So sometimes these odds don't make any sense. They just don't. I don't understand how you can get no hits, but then go over hits, runs, and RBIs. Are you just hitting sacrifice flies all game? What are you doing? You're getting walks and then you're getting on and then you're scoring a run twice. That's fucking stupid. So if we look at his hits, runs, and RBIs, he's projected for two of those, minus 145 to the to the over. How's he been getting this done? By way of the single. Maybe a double here and there. Is he scoring any runs? Or is he driving any runs in? Not really. He's scoring runs. So he's getting on base and he's scoring a run. So those are his two main contributors to his hits, runs, and RBIs. A single is three points and a run scored is two. So there's five. He needs to get you two hits today. It's mathematically impossible for him to get you a single and a run and he cannot go over fantasy points just on those two things. Now, if he gets walks today, is he drawing walks? He can, but not every game. If he were to draw a walk today, there's your seven, but now he needs eight to go over, right? Because it scores at seven. So what's his clearest path to eight fantasy points? Home run? Probably not going to happen. A triple would do it. Probably not going to happen. Double, more likely to happen. If he got you a double and scored a run, there's your seven. But he still needs to get you one more. He just he needs multiple hits. He needs multiple hits. He needs two singles and he needs to score a run. If you feel he can get you two singles today, which is what he's been doing on the reg, then... He's in a very good spot to go over. And I don't want to say guarantee, but it does feel like if he's on base, he's going to score a run. You know, the rest of the lineup is doing a great job of getting him around. So he's doing his job. He's getting on base. Now do your job and get him home. He needs two hits today. It's hard for me to see him go over with just one single. But if you feel two hits are in his future, I think the over is in play because scoring a run is it's been pretty consistent over his last five games, ten games. All right. Lance Lynn under pitching outs. Who's this guy play for now? St. Louis. I feel like every year he's on two different teams. He starts the year off in one on on one team and he ends the year on on a completely different team. All right. Whoa. Minus 140 to each side. That's funny. So we're looking at the under 17 and a half pitching outs. He has yet to go over this this year. Three starts this season. They, now they are creeping up. They're creeping up in increments of two. So two, one, that's one and a half. Let's round it up to two. So based off that 
trend, then he gets you 17 pitching outs, which is still under. So looks like it's in play. The bad news is this is against Oakland. So I was going to say the best case scenario would be for him to get roughed up and then get pulled early. So then he didn't even get a chance to go over. Uh, Oakland doesn't have a lot of big bats in the lineup. I mean, they can small ball you to death and put up runs, but it's like death by paper cut. So we're just looking for him to keep doing what he's been doing, which is go out there, strike out five, six people, give up a few runs and get pulled before the sixth inning. That's all you need. If he doesn't get if he doesn't get you to six innings, you're you're great. But he definitely if he gets six innings, he's over. So you just hope that he gets uh he gets removed from the game within the fifth inning or before. He is prone to giving up some 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 runs, man. Like he he can give them up. But I don't mind that at all, as long as it stays at 17 and a half. If it starts getting bumped down, it starts getting a little riskier. Like the push is more in play at that point. All right. Last two plays we'll look at in the same game. We got Ingram over Demon Rebounds. I wish I would have saw his Demon Rebound earlier. I could have looked it up at the same time. And then... Um, We did not look up Brandon. Uh, we did not look up Austin Reeves, but I already researched Austin Reeves this morning and last night. But we'll look at it at 23 and a half. Okay. So today, Brandon Ingram needs six rebounds to get you the over on his demon. He's gotten this in four out of 10 games, which is for a demon prop, it's not, not bad hit rate. You're never going to see 70, 80% hit rate for a demon. Otherwise, well, first of all, if it's that good of a play, you're not going to see it on a board. You're going to see that higher line. So the juice will never be heavy on these to the over, but the, product, the production is there. Against the Lakers, he has gotten you six or more in two games. Projected for 5.26. All I'm saying is that if you like, if you're going to play it at five, now you're looking at the five and a half because he needs six. If you're playing it at five, he needs six. If you're playing it at five and a half, he needs six. The only difference is, is the push is in play at five. If he doesn't get you six, your slip is still alive for a sweep. If you play it at five and a half and he gets stuck at five, then you lose. So that's a decision you have to make. But I feel if you're looking at it at five, five and a half, you need the same number to get over both of those. We're seeing some demons today that are actually in play due to the small discrepancy between demon and original line. Find some of those and, and do a little research versus just playing demon plays blindly. So we're seeing some decent value on these. Austin Reeves over PRA, 23. We liked it at 22. Now we're getting it at 23. It's possible this one gets bumped up to 23 and a half. Feel good about it if you locked it in at the earlier lines because that's where all the value was. You can see that the lines are already trending under at 23 and a half because he needs 24. But at 22 and a half, game logs look better. Odds are slightly better. Projections are also in favor uh, of the 22 and a half. They're right there. Now he can easily not hit this, sure. But you have a better chance of them getting you 23 than 24. These are all games against the Pelicans. Now over his last 10 games, a little bit more misses. However, he still has a 60% hit rate, 40 in his last five, including one game against the Pelicans. It just needs 23. That's it.
I don't know where you can find this at 22 anymore. I don't know if it's available on Sleeper or if it's available on Underdog at 22 and a half. But if you can find it at 22 and a half, that will be your best line today. All right. Round four, I think, right? Okay. Hung Hu Lee, this guy needs to get you two hits. Two singles and a run scored. He's already getting you a run scored pretty much in every game and getting you a single in every game. We need him to get you two singles or a single. No, a single, a walk, and a run scored only gets you seven. So in order for him to get you eight, he needs two singles and a run scored. Two singles or greater. Austin Reeves, I like it at 22 and a half. I'm not playing it at 23. But if you want to take a shot on it at 23, push potential is in play. Brandon Ingram, I think this is a, a risk to look into, a demon to look into. If you like it at five, he needs six. If you like it at five, five and a half, he still needs six. Lynn under uh, pitching outs, as long as this stays at 17, even if his trend continues and he gets you two extra outs like he's been doing over the past three starts that only puts him at 17 he does need to get you six complete innings to get the over on this one so as long as it is at 17 i think it's in play for the under all right boom Woo! there's a lot of player props a lot of player props <laughs> 2.5 hung ho is a demon that's his uh Total bases or hit runs and RBIs. Hit runs and RBIs. Okay, listen, we already kind of we already created a likely path to his success, which is two hits and a run scored. Over his last ten games, he's gotten you a run and a hit pretty much in every game. In order for him to get you the over on fantasy score, he needs to get you hopefully two hits, right? So that's his that's his that's his format. Two hits and a run score. That's three. So if you like the over on his fantasy score, you can look at the over on his hits, runs, and RBIs at the demon line of two and a half. Yeah, I don't see teams trying to intentionally walk him because why would you give him a free pass to get on base, right? You probably want to go at him and take your shot at getting him out or, you know, getting him to ground out versus just giving him a free pass. Feels like once he's on first, he scores. So I don't believe we see him get intentionally walked today. Which is great because he'll have an opportunity to get a hit, which is worth more points. Lance Lynn under pitching outs. Ingram over those rebounds. We talked about that one. So screenshot these already. Let's clear it out. What's going on, Timothy Smith? Marvell. You feel like this is a Ruby game, Joseph? What am I doing? I don't know if you like the over or under on his points. Um, Timothy, we'll look at it real quick before we get out of here. Yeah, I got to get out of here. All 
All right, McCollum's points. This guy's been on a on a tear last five games, giving you 25 or more in all those games. One game against the Lakers on Sunday. Last 10 games, even better, 90% hit rate. Well, nothing's better than 100%, but impressive. 90% hit rate. Now, keep in mind, a lot of oh, all those games, except for this one, was without Brandon Ingram. We know that McCollum's usage rate does go up when Ingram's not in the lineup. Now that Ingram is back. We didn't really see it impact him too much last game, but that was Ingram's first game back. Add a few days of rest and elevate the uh, importance of this game. A win or go home type of game. It's possible we see um, more usage from Ingram. Where the fuck is Ingram? Okay, so games with Ingram played are a little different. So last 10 games with Ingram in the lineup, two out of 10 games he's gone over this line. It is something to pay attention to because anytime you see a player's usage go up when a player sits out, you have to factor in when that player returns. Especially a high usage player like Ingram. You know, it's not like um, freaking Hawkins coming back from injury and you're not really going to see that impact McCollum too much. But a, a fellow starter and one that's averaging double digit points and all that shit, just take it into consideration and look at this also. Don't just look. Don't just look at this. Oh shit, he's gonna kill him this game. Factor in that everybody's healthy now, and this team is hard to target that production when everybody's healthy. Now he does need 24 points to go over this. He is projected for 24 points on the dot 23.96. In terms of the over on his odds, you got BetMGM liking the under, Caesars, DraftKings, and FanDuel liking the under. If you can find this at 22 and a half, those are your best odds. Points bet likes it over 125 minus 105 to the under. So. Just one playoff game for him. Same exact situation they were in last year, playing tournament team. Only difference is their team is healthier and they're better. So see if that matters this season. But sample sizes were almost worth not even looking at. All right. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's stream. Two hours strong. Did not have a live stream on Monday. My schedule for live streams posted in advance. But uh, what I mean by that is all my live streams are scheduled out. So if you don't get a notification that day, then there is no live stream. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Those are my four live days. Monday, Thursday, Sundays are off. Very active in the Discord. From about 5 a.m. and so live stream and then active in the afternoon leading up the tip off typically don't post any plays or any picks after games have started unless i do the random two half slip depending on the flow of the game that could be in play today depending on how this playoff game these playoff games go maybe a second half slip is in play but the majority of the picks and slips are done prior to tip off so be back tomorrow Wednesday, 9 a.m. with another Player Prop Talk live stream. Hit that like button on your way out. Think about subbing up to the channel. Consider subbing up to the channel, I should say. As I always say, I hope all of your player props respect the damn coin. Best of luck to you all. Hopefully tomorrow we have maximal profit, minimal turds to talk about. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Until tomorrow's live stream, 
Have a fantastic day. Chavez is out.